Matt Medina, season two, night one judge. Matt, go ahead and introduce yourself for the people at home. Hi, my name is Matt Medina. I go by the Cocktail Cowboy here in Houston. Uh, I'm a fellow bartender here around town, now at Beverage Consultant. Awesome, awesome. So, for many, many of y'all may know, the Cocktail Cowboy persona is one of the most iconic, sort of recognizable personas in the city. Now Matt, how did you develop that persona? What are some of your creative direction and how did past experiences sort of mold this iconic character? For, sure. For one, thank you. Uh, the Cocktail Cowboy brand kind of came off in Nashville where I was at previously. Um, I was doing some bartending out there on Broadway and it really took me to hop on the bar stage there, get a beer and be in front of hundreds of people and you know pour rumple shots down people's throat and then take off my cowboy hat and kind of have like little magic mic each cowboy out of the vibe. Uh, that's when the persona of me being a bartender and having fun and being this explosion in the room of energy really helped the character. Uh, and I say it because I'm not that person 24-7, but when my hat's on and I'm out, I'm probably ready to party. So what would be your advice to other bartenders coming up to find their persona, their character, to find that best extension of themselves? Be true to yourself. I would say definitely find something that makes you you. What categorizes you makes you different. Everyone can have the fundamentals of bartending. Everyone can shake a certain way. Everyone can maybe even do a little flair a certain way. But it's really staying true to yourself and then getting better at that. Learning the basics and then building from there. Keep it simple, keep it organic, keep it original, and things grow pretty quick. Very well said. So let's talk a little bit about the Cocktail Cowboy concepts. Now, that's honestly one of the most unique brands in the city as well. Now, it definitely has your fingerprints on it. It definitely has your creative vision on it. What do you do and what are some things you do outside of bartending to sort of create that brand and put that interesting twist on the cocktails you create? Twists of the cocktails and the brand in general, I would say were two different things. So with the cocktails, I want it to be as pretty as possible. These are cocktails that I project, you know, to pee in someone's hand, that's pretty. You know, it's under a dim lit light, it's next to a candle, it's glimmering, it's sexy, it's killing. Um, so, that's where things really thrive. Having my little flair on it is maybe add some kind of small theatric show to it. Maybe the way we shake, the way we pour it, the way we're now stacking glass right now. You know, we, yeah. All right, cool. So let's talk a little bit about cocktail, co cocktail cowboy concepts. Now, that's one of the most unique sort of one-off bartending brands in the city. They do a great job of, of curating events, and it's a really unique twist on a lot of bartending traditions. Matt, what's some of your inspiration behind cultivating these events, these cocktails, and the performance behind it? Yeah, for one, thank you. And it's really just kind of staying from the base, having a good foundation and kind of going from there. Getting classics and then putting little flares on them and little slight details and the attention to detail is what really helps. You know, it's, we can all build a certain cocktail a certain way, but it really comes down to the, the sexy glass you put it in, the way you shake it, the way it comes out, uh, and the little flare you have with the camera when you're pouring it. It's the interaction with the guests that really kind of captivates them to be like, you're getting them from every angle, you know, from the visual sight with your eyes first to the taste and then to the experience. It's kind of really helps captivate them in to want more. It's very sensual, sensual. Anyways, so a lot of people might not know this, but we were actually in Uptown during its peak pre-COVID. After that, I believe you went to Nashville. Would you would you recommend a lot of would you recommend bartenders sort of reinvent themselves in other cities and taking that culture? Hundred percent. I think what for me, what especially what helps is I've always had this energy I've had, this style I've liked, but I've always been in positions in previous establishments that I had to be a certain way. I had to be this square, I had to be this leader, I had to be this corporate person. Um, going to Nashville and experiencing this kind of country Hollywood where no one's from. People are songwriters, they're singers, they're guitarists, they're musicians. You know, they're coming from all over the country to perform here. And then their side hustle was bartending or serving. So being in a realm where you're in a, in a whole city full of nomads, no one's really knowing you. I mean, they're just really getting to know themselves. Being in that environment where everyone's embracing you to be you, and you can have fun, and your energy just comes out, and then you rip out of your shell, is the best way to do it, honestly. In a city where it's okay to do that, because sometimes at home, you know, it's a little intimidating, or it can be a little embarrassing, or you're shy. And whereas in a major market, that was for me. It took me to hop onto a bar top in front of 15 plus people, you know, with a rock band behind me, just ripping it on the guitar. I'm just like, ah! Just, it felt good to kind of have that Superman rip off your chest moment, and then have the crowd just go crazy with it. I can tell you from experience, man, we definitely see that energy every time you shake. Like, we, we love it, man. It definitely spoke to you. So with that being said, what are some other projects you're really looking forward to going forward? For sure. So I have two coming up. I have a restaurant concept coming up Uptown Park that's going to be called Duchess. 
Um, it's more of a new American style. The cocktail menu I've kind of curated for there uh, is perfectly balanced in every way possible. I, my investment team and leadership team met with me a couple times, had a few tastings. I mean, I'm using cherry wood smokes and then rice. So I'm, you know, I'm infusing my own syrups and creating my own cordials. And at the same time, streamlining it the same way I did at my core positions. We have Blanco and North. You know, we had these massive five million plus restaurant concepts, but we had to get drinks out quick. Those systems, integrating those into this menu. So having this, this the corporate structure and then the fun flavored creativity now mashed together in a realm where I have complete control of the entire show. And that's what I, I call them, I call them shows. You know, for me, I'm building up to a show that I'm putting on for you guys is all the prep behind it, all the groundwork behind it. Whenever you have all those things in place when it comes to showtime, you're good to go. So in the past couple of years, even here at FAO, we're starting to see a lot of streamlined cocktails. We're, seeing, we're starting to see a lot of batches. We're starting to see a lot more preparation, a lot more infusion process. Do you think that that behind the scenes preparation really helps you perform your show? And do you think the focus of every experience should be the show itself in addition with the cocktail as props? Well, I think in the realm where everything is content, in a sense, you may have the enthusiast that loves how to make the syrup, how to sous vide this, how to infuse this. Um, so capturing content on that and showcasing that along the journey is amazing because there's an audience for that. And then there's the, the more massive audience of the people where getting the drink out on, on camera, you know, putting it in front of them, that, putting that garnish, making it look pretty under that light next to that candle is what the masses kind of really see. So also captivating the content on that is another audience to keep showcasing. Um, and as you guys are realizing, especially when it comes to something like this, is the more audiences you have, the more markets you touch, the more you can grow and you find other people in other communities that are just like you or inspiring to be like you or get feedback from you or motivation from you and it helps them grow as well. Well, there you have it. And Matt, honestly, man, you're a guy that really made me want to grow, so I do appreciate that. Always, Thank man. you so much for having me. Thank you for having me, guys. Dude, pleasure's all ours. Let's do it. I'll have it. <laughs>